Uh, we got the cursed trials. We got the winners rounds for you guys. That's why you guys see in Trump again. That's why you guys see in Thice again. And of course, joining me is uh, Kibler. How you doing? <clears throat> uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I play dragons. Feel pretty good about that. <laughs> and I put Crush in my decks. Because <laughs> I'm a hipster. Yeah, but the other guys don't know what they're doing with their <laughs> warrior decks. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's kind of like, I kind of really like the idea of just playing dragons uh, <laughs> in my decks. And it's just because, you know, you know uh, golden monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You're, you're just too good at these. You should just, you know, quit Hearthstone, take up, like, stand-up comedy, make fun of all the gamers in every game. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing one tour, and then I'll never be invited back again. Because uh, <laughs> that people just like, ah, we've seen that already, we're moving on. Like Frank Galliendo. All right. Well, let's see how these players match up here. Uh, we've seen very, very little of Warlock, actually. Um, out of the day one players, is Trump the only Warlock? I think he is. And um, definitely didn't have uh, too bad of a round with the Warlock. I mean, he just he just went in Warrior and, and just crushed him. It yeah. It was pretty easy. Um, he is bringing the Shaman. He is bringing the Druid. Uh Feels like Trump is just bringing the standard solid decks, but from w w what we've seen in the limited amount of Warlock games, it seems like the other players may have missed on uh, the opportunity to bring the strong deck to the tournament. Uh, Tice is bringing the Warrior, the, the poorest results of the tournament so far, but he is he is the one player to win with the deck, I'm pretty sure. Has anyone else won with the deck? At least, at least on stream, and I, Eloise mentioned to me that she went zero three with the Warriors all in the lower brackets. So oh wow, so the Warriors like one in twelve, of one in ten. <laughs> is it ten? Yeah. So she lost six times with it. Um, okay. Saw Kibler lose twice with it, and we saw Tice lost twice with it, didn't he? Or did he lose once? Maybe one. It's in nine. bad. It's bad. It's the yeah. It, it might be 10% win rate, it might be 12% win rate, but that, that win rate is, uh, is not what you'd expect when you bring a deck to a tournament. Yep. Here we see the Warlock deck once again, or it is against the Druid. Um, I feel like the Warlock deck is actually pretty strong against the Druid. I, I feel like the, the Druid uh, really struggles to keep up with a lot of decks, and the fact that uh, it doesn't have access to Shredder is probably one of the biggest problems with this matchup, which was already kind of a problem uh, to begin with. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good point. You know, actually, here's a fun fact, uh, and and I just got uh, mentioned to this by some of the admins. Trump is actually the only player to bring Warlock in the tournament, and that surprises me because I thought I thought Warlock would still actually be very well representative. It's one of the most adaptable classes mm -hmm. to big shifts in card pools because of their hero power is so flexible. Um, but Trump's the only person in the entire uh, group of sixteen players. Does that surprise you, Griff? And that does surprise me. I thought Hamlock would be. Um acceptable and I thought that Zulok would be pretty decent and so far we've seen well Zulok be pretty decent at least yeah I mean it's, it does lose some really big cards you know the, the Nerubi egg with some power overwhelming plays gave it a lot of ability to be good on the board uh, even Haunted Creeper to the yeah. extent implosion Haunted... yeah there's, there's a lot of unfair cards that, that Zulok <laughs> lost but um, I think it's still got plenty left Sure thing. Uh, one thing also to notice, note too, is that Trump for a while was a big fan of the like Voidcaller Demon Zoo for a while, but you even lose that because you can't uh, play Voidcaller into stuff. You lose Malganus as well. Uh, I wonder how good this is though, because traditionally the Warlock was very good against the Druid, so it's just very, it's very powerful uh, tool that you have as the Druid as the warlock player to be able to seize tempo commandingly against the druid and you build up reasonable sized boards that they can't fight back against you easily But without some of those tools, maybe it becomes a much fair much more fair matchup for the druid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It uh, it'll be pretty tough to for, for the druid to win overall, but um, The druid is is always capable of very unfair plays as we've seen so far Now, if you had to bring just uh, your... I mean, we, we've thought about this. We've all thought about what decks we can uh, see ourselves playing um, in, in the future. I'm kind of curious, what what would you bring to a tournament like this, Fredan? 
Uh, well, I actually was of the belief that aggro was super good, so I, I was going to try to bring, like, Face Hunter, Aggro Paladin, Aggro Shaman, uh, because I want to take advantage of just the fact that people don't have Belcher and Heal Bot. But now that I see that a significant amount of people have brought Dragon lineups, maybe I would have just gotten crushed by one of those people. Mm -hmm. uh, would have, I don't know, it's pretty hard to say, but that seems to be... Uh, some of the thinkings, except maybe people include Druid into some of their lineups as well. Um, so, taking a look at uh, the plays here, Trump's just going to Mortal Coil, pick up some of the draws. Flame Juggler, another, another interesting card here included, but it kind of makes sense. You just want those small little board advantages for Zoo, so it doesn't seem like too bad of a choice here by Trump. He ended up mulliganing it out, and it would have been very good against the, the Living Roots that was played on turn one, but still, right. it's, it's fine. I would actually would have liked to see the... Um, uh, the Dark mm. Peddler instead of the Juggler last turn. Because any any big minion that's played here will have to be answered by the minion played on the, on the prior turn. So I think mm -hmm. I think delaying the Juggler one turn while it, it pushes for less uh, like damage, um, I think is, is going to be a better two-turn board pressure play. What? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. Because the, the board pressure is ultimately what snowballs things. That's what gives Druid the ability to Savage Roar and maybe even win back the board. That's what gives Zoo the entire ability to close out games behind Doomguard. Um, hmm. Well, um, there could be a merciless onslaught of juggles. Um, yeah, you know, it could be right. fl Flame Juggler, that's two, and Peddler's mm -hmm. one, and then Fire coin out a one drop for another one. And that uh, one drop could be a boar for two. A stone tusk boar, right? Another reappearance. That's a good start, but so Ooh, far, not bad. Okay. It's getting hot in here. Let's go. Another ping. Oh. Uh, oh. Is he gonna, is he try, gonna try for try. it? I think he's gonna try for it, and he's going face no matter what. And you can't give up. There's no way you give him five damage here. Oh. Nope. Well, there's no swipe. Yet. Oh no, no okay. swipe. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Usually when you're like, ah, oh, there's not this card, it ends up falling exactly yeah. the, the, the following turn. I think Wild Growth is actually a decent play here. Um, the Jura of the Claw just trades the board, so you don't you don't actually start winning, and you could get completely destroyed by a Power of Whelm. While okay. if you do Wild Growth and Hero Power, you get rid of two damage on the board, um, but you can Ancient of War next turn, uh, which is a really big deal. So I feel it's it's about as good of a tempo play, and whenever you have about as good of a tempo play and it involves wild growth, it's probably time to make it. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good point. Um, Drew the Claw seems like it's a very easy way for you to fall super far behind. Power of Overwhelming just gives you so much more mana to play with. Uh, and, and of course, we know in Trump's hand, it would completely blow Druid into like a really awkward spot here. Yeah. So I agree. And you know what? I mean, Tice recognizes it too. This is like a hard call to make because the very obvious play is like, well, I guess I just trade and play Drew the Claw, right? But this is definitely like a, a more difficult thing to evaluate, um, you know, when you stop and think about it as opposed to autopilot. But man, talk about having an intense board here. It's going to be a nine power loaded up. Yeah, it's so hard for the Drew to deal with this. Um, the Druid just has to like start winning and never give up the lead, uh, and that that comes usually from Innervate and your opponent drawing badly. So n neither of those things happen, and uh, no surprise, uh, Trump is is ridiculously far ahead this game. If he has Owl, I believe that's lethal. But uh, oh no, he he wouldn't have. Yeah, actually, he would have enough. So, uh, but he doesn't have it, so he's gonna try to evaluate if he just wants to get through this. Kind of like the the peddler over the dark iron. So many possibilities. You can do peddler power of whelm on a two attack guy. Uh, play the one drop that you get from peddler soul fire, discarding the dark iron, and then you tap. Yeah. You know, you might even get another power of whelm to so just directly seven. pick up a really easy trade there. I don't mind. I mean, the Warlock being at 29 is so huge as well. It basically means that the Warlock can tap as much as he wants for the entire rest of the game. Would you, like, pick Corruption if you had the chance? Because we can't see the Discover, but that'd be pretty funny if you just, like, don't have much of a better option. So you just play Corruption and just play Dark Iron Dwarf and just, like, pass. I don't know about that. 
think it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'm actually. saying it's still a great choice, but just one of those hypothetical situations. Yeah. I like pressing here. Uh, Druid just doesn't have a way to fight back. My control tech and Druid of the Claws is the way here. That is pretty good. Um, he's not dead, and then he has a combo next turn. Try to clear, but I I feel that's still too slow. Yeah, it's where definitely like a scenario where I think you're just barely alive, but you know you can just get Doom Guard off the top here. Oh, there's there's a wide range of cards that that can be drawn here. In yeah. in the current state of the board, uh, Trump is four damage short. So any silence, power overwhelm, soul fire, uh, a few cards from a pet. Oh no, he's already played both pet peddlers. Um, Doom guards, of course. It could just be a double buff. It could just be abusive and dark iron. Oh, that's not gonna do it. It's not it. A damage the other way, and he's just a little bit more juice. Arjun Squire Ooh, doesn't get it. I, now here's what I'm really curious about. Like, how do you want to trade this? Okay. Yeah, I f I feel like the Void Walker is is really good at shutting down uh, Force of Nature clear. Yeah, it just takes one tree in, and I mean you, you're still alive if you Force of Nature clear, I believe. Just barely though. Yeah. You're, you're at one HP. You're at one. <laughs> <laughs> Against the Warlock. Is it better to Drew the Claw and to heal yourself? Do you gain as much life no. that way? No, you you want to do... You want to taunt up once you don't have any health left. You want to yeah. use your health as a resource once you still have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as a very rare resource right now. You only have four yeah. pieces left. <laughs> still, it's there. Not going anywhere. Actually, it is going somewhere. It's going somewhere pretty quick, actually. Uh, it's like, if you're at 1 HP, he has 2 taps to do it. Alright, Tyson ends up going for the safest possible play, and, and maybe he has feels like he has an opportunity to uh, to turn it around. Whoa. That's not helpful, and... No, but that would have been enough if he uh, if Tyson right. made the other play. 6, 10, 12, and right now he's at 13 health. Just barely not enough. Mm. But it also doesn't really uh, clear much of from the board uh, because the the divine shield and then the pump. Uh, he only loses one minion in that exchange. It, it, uh, oh, I was thinking about double combo, force of nature, like innervate draw here, Crib. Oh, innervate. No. Wow. Yeah, I think innervate may have been <laughs> <just> lethal. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he couldn't use his own face, so he loses a little bit of damage, but I think that would have been it. He'd lose six and six, so he'd have uh, six from the last tree, seven, seven. from the guy. Yeah, he'd have 17 face. face. Yeah. It would have been lethal. Innervate would have been a lethal draw Oh, there. man. Is there any opportunity for him to draw something from Ancient of Lore to bring him back? Not unless it's like mind... No, not even mind control tech would save him. Would it not? What? If he steals a 3-4... What about then... Innervate Mind Control Tech? Yeah. I still think no, but... He's gonna try. Oh, Innervate was the next oh, card! Oh, there's one card off! Ty's realized, he's like, oh, I had the chance! The dream was one card away! Wow. And that was oh, only possible oh, because oh, Trump oh, played oh, three oh, consecutive oh, Flame Imps. Dude. <laughs> I mean, the Flame Imps also contributed to him being within double combo range, Yeah, right? that's what I mean. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. All right, well, uh, Trump does take the first match in the exchange, and he uh, remains the the only uh, Warlock player and the uh, only undefeated uh, Warlock player. Yeah, 2-0 for the Warlocks so far. His, others two, his other two decks are uh, still quite standard. Uh, Druid, that's going to do very well against... Uh, Honestly, everything in the tournament. And then uh, Shaman might struggle pretty hard. Uh, Tice is actually in the winner's bracket uh, on the back of denying Shaman a win with his Priest and then his Warrior, I believe. So um, Trump is really looking just to close out a win with the Shaman.
That is going to be the, his biggest challenge. All right. Well, we'll see if he's able to do that. Tice is uh, going to switch gears here and go to his Dragon Warrior, uh, a deck that's still had some, let, let's just say, unimpressive results for now, particularly <laughs> against this class. Druid seems to be giving uh, the Dragon Warrior fits, despite the fact that you are anticipating Druid in this format. You, you're, mm -hmm. This is like what you're expecting to be the most popular deck here. Yeah, yeah. Well, from these hands, we see Innervate in one hand, and we see a pretty clunky hand on the warrior side, so mm. I'm not feeling too great about this one. Yeah, right now it just feels like you're, you're, you're so imprisoned by the dragon synergies, right? It's like if you're not holding a dragon, you don't get the benefit of it, but then you'd rather have slightly better early game options than just holding on to stuff, so... In some ways, you're imprisoned by your hand, and that's the that's the lack of consistency on the dragon part uh, that frustrates so many players. Okay, what do you do here as the druid? I mean, if this was uh, not against the warrior, you'd easily innervate out the uh, the raptor, and you can protect it with a wrath. But you can't protect it from a fiery war axe, so. Okay. Yeah, and it just so happened that the Mountain Raptor is really good against that kind of <laughs> board, but um, Drake is still not bad here, right? Uh, I'd like the Wrath a bit more. Okay. I feel like Drake, you're just kind of getting a bit too ahead of yourself. You don't really have a great turn three play um, if things go wrong. Okay. Oh, you mean if like they remove the Drake very efficiently? Yeah. Like slam execute or something. Yeah, um, I think okay. here you might That's actually fair. want a shield block. He's gonna axe. Okay. Ooh! All right. So he really wants to start getting ahead of the curve of like removing minions, and it just so happens that, uh, you know, if you wanted to play Mountain Raptor this turn, you would have lost it and then been able to develop something else instead. So heads up play from this. Ice. I think this might be a good time to Drake, and you can even. Um, you can even coin out uh, Living Roots if you want. Oh, the Mounted Raptor is going to get horribly punished. Looks like Trump will be able to counter with the um, with the Keeper, but that I feel that's a, it's like a slow reaction, you know. Yeah, definitely. He needs a really good one drop here for this war, and that's not quite good enough in my opinion. Yeah, you're looking for like Dust Devil. Mm-hmm. I would definitely prefer the, the charging on Straza's champion than a 2 6 sub. Yeah, not to mention you lose snap. the Black Wings Brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oasis Snapchat. Snap You're all. <laughs> yeah. Oasis Snapchat mode. The thing about the um, this, too, is that it kind of like forces Druid into a hero power, if, assume they don't have a play into it. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, though, that's going to be. Uh, a keeper of the Grove force because you don't want to innervate the Ancient of Lord just to lose tempo onto the board. Plus, it's turn five, and you know what happens on turn five with dragon decks. You know that your opponent's holding a dragon because Alex Draza's charge has gotten yep. the activation. So just play very uh, careful with making your opponent uncomfortable with their plays as well. Because right now, it's not, not nothing's clean. Again, for health, it seems to be that really annoying sticky point for the, this Dragon Warrior deck. For all warriors from this point forward in standard. Yeah. Every single um, time. <laughs> these Farseers may have been the difference um, in Tice's warrior deck, though. I, I, don't, I don't think we've... I think maybe we saw one other warrior deck with a Farseer. But in general, I think they've been absent. I wield the power. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I think Kibler favored more, like, Hungry Dragons and Crushes. Uh, and then Eloise favored more, like... Draconoid Crushers and Brawl, so it seems like there's just different ideas taken up by their own individual practices that really gave them the idea that this was good. And I, I think, again, like I think Farseer does tend to lean towards being very reliable compared to some of the other stuff which can be pretty inconsistent. Hungry Dragon, for example, can give you something really good or really bad. The Weaponsmith, uh, decent spot for it. I mean, you're not going to do much better than that. 
Oh, that's excellent, I think. You don't even have a weapon, so it's not like you have uh, traffic with the weapons where you're jammed up by, like, King's Defenders or Fiery War Axe. I like it. And you have pretty strong board presence compared to your opponent. Yeah. From, uh, from Trump here, we'll have to see the Azure Drake. Not much play otherwise. Ooh, he would have loved to have that this turn. Yeah, one card off from reducing not only Force Nature, Savage War, but also Swipe, and that usually allows you to play everything at 10 mana, so would have been Look pretty at that. You need to what four damage. You just run the Weaponsmith. Yeah, absolutely. That extra little bit. If everything does three, you just add an extra one or two. And you know what, that Twilight Guardian is sitting on the bench, but he is the secret MVP for making this deck work right now. Ooh, it's going to be hard to go through these Ancient of Wars, though. We have not seen Black Knight yet. Uh, maybe no. on the second day, maybe tomorrow we will see some. Uh, again, uh, today uh, we, we are seeing only half the field play. This is a three-day tournament. Eight players showing their creations and their plays today. And uh, tomorrow, same start time. Uh, we will have uh, we will have the remainder of the players, and you know maybe uh, maybe there's a few interesting bits that we haven't yet seen that's possible in this format. Yeah, I'm sure there are, but we'll see if it's uh, uh, if it's brought to the table tomorrow. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Uh, it, it seems as if the shield block here wouldn't guarantee anything significant. Man, Ancient of War just so. So beefy, man. How do you get past this efficiently? Yeah, you can't really do it. But you, you could, could just load the board. You could hypothetically shield block into like a dragon, and uh, maybe the Twilight Guardian actually has an opportunity to introduce complicated board tra uh, trades for your opponent as well. Whoa, he's going for the Twilight Guardian as well, so he can get more stats there. Oh, man. Away oh, Guardian. Both, he already used both Alex Strauss's Charge and both Blackwing Corruptors. Uh, yeah. Outside of a, of a Blackwing Technician, I don't think there's any more direct activators, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he could be thinking, okay, well, there's no point in doing that. I just lose a ton on this. I feel like Swipe has to be the play, but it's, it's kind of weak. Is there any reason to Wild Growth to 10? Yeah, so if you play Emperor and Wild Growth, you have access to Force of Nature, Savage, or Swipe next on turn 10. Or, sorry, on 10 mana. Mm -hmm. So that gives you in range of 18, plus, let's say the Emperor survives, that would be hmm. 25 damage. Which <laughs> happens to be what your opponent at, is at if you if he just numbers <laughs> up. Okay. Assuming assuming everything goes right though, there's a lot of ways to board. Yeah. And and HP. Yeah. But All right, well, that's, that's really a reasonable good play. Yeah. yeah it's Can't kill the first one. Here's another one. You couldn't execute the first one, so <laughs> why not just load up the board more? And then I'm just gonna go for normal Force of Nature Savage War on this, right? No need to make it too complicated. Slam's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Gives him ways to spend his mana this turn. Slam into Execute would probably be the, the best draw here right now because he can use the Cruel Taskmaster to help clean. You know, even Big Game Hunter would be pretty good if he had the mana to use it, though. Never mind. Mm -hmm. GG. Execute? Nope. Another no. uh, Oasis Guardian there. I guess you... Want to play the farce here? Here, I guess the the Twilight Guardian was, number two is also possible as well, considering that it's slightly more beef on the on the board here, and it doesn't die to just one trade from the Ancient of War. The the real scary thing again is your opponent's on nine mana, and he has a lot of cards. And the moment he draws Emperor or drops Emperor, it's just going to be really scary, intimidating. Is he going to drop Emperor though? Yeah, I mean, he has 9 mana, so Drew the Claw and Sengen is also pretty good. He could just combo to clear. I don't think I would, though. It feels like that's still your primary win condition, especially if your opponent's playing taunts without the taunt effect. Yeah, yeah I think if you combo clear, the, um, 
the Varian will probably uh, seal out the game for the Warrior. Yeah, exactly. The combo, the Force of Nature Savage Roar is your win is your win condition, especially as the game drags on and they're using more of their um, their minions as tools that are normally taunts. Because eventually he's going to be drawing into the removal pieces for Warrior, which means he won't have ways to put up taunts in front of the, the Druid to combo. Oh, he is going with Emperor. Power of Ragnaros! It's got some really awesome things that's been reduced in cost, like Force of Nature, Savage, or Swipe, we've mentioned. But even yeah. like Drew the Claw being cheaper with the uh, Senjin gives him more flexibility to do stuff. Not to mention Wild Growth gets cheaper for cycles, so all of them are pretty reasonable. Well, he's got Ysera now, which enables the Twilight Guardian a, a little bit. Um, yeah. It's a bit optimistic, though. So, you're forced a cruel task to kill off the Ancient of War and then play the Twilight Guardian? Yeah, that's kind of sad. That's really sad. Varian Rin can't do anything because it's 10 mana. You, you're, you're literally locked into having him pull a charge minion, Behold which you don't have. Oh, no, Chilma. Chilma could do it. Oh, you're right, Chilma. If he has it? No. Nope. Just a car. No. Nope. Oh, does that save him? No, 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 he's, he reduced swipe as well, so he's got uh, a lot of damage. He's gonna try, just in case, because he, he gets slightly above the Force of Nature Savage Roar range by trading into this, but... Yeah, but armor, yeah. If, if you have no health, and then Armor Smith puts you at like 5 armor, uh, you're still dead. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact! Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that was uh, pretty straightforward. Once again, Druid being the oppressive force we've expected it to be, but that's that's kind of why we always say that. You know, Druid is really strong, and we think not bringing it could end up costing people more than uh, helping them. We'll see, though. It's a 2-0 lead for Trump, and the mayor of Value Town is one game away from being able to advance to the final day and getting in the money. That's right. It's going to have to be on Shaman, though, and this is the deck that uh, Tice has punished pretty well. And I think with, uh, with good luck, uh, he's certainly able to turn this around completely. We've seen the Priest uh, kind of handle the Shaman very well. We've seen the Warrior handle the Shaman. That is the one time any Warrior won in this tournament. And um, yeah, Druid just handles everything. So it's, uh, it's not looking too bad matchup-wise for Tice, so we'll see uh, how the cards come down and uh, if you can bring this back. Name of the game will be just to build up the early board once more for the Shaman, get that early curve. Totem Golem, one of the best cards against Druid, just because nothing they have early game answers that 3-4 body, not to mention it, it pred you know, it's, it's a predator for things like Darnassus Aspirant, mm -hmm. so that's something the Shaman will look for. Cards like Juggler are still very vulnerable to Innervate plays, or even the Living Roots, which is exactly what we see here. I'm I, I really curious to see if uh, Elemental Destruction is playing a role here, because sometimes that just happens to be exactly where all the Druid minions' health are at, and it gives you ability to stay alive. But, uh, oh, not a good hand at all for the Shaman. No. It's terrible. My god. Wolf Rider is pretty interesting. I feel like the uh, the Argent Horse Riders are so much better, but I mean... No, I think he has I guess both. He can run both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wonder if he runs the full degenerate uh, six-sum of three mana chargers, and you know what I'm talking about. Wolf Riders, Argent Arcane Horse Goals. Riders, and Arcane Gold. Yeah. Full palette. Well, speaking of Degenerate, we just saw one of the most disgusting openers oh, God. can have. Doctor Juggler. <laughs> oh, God. That's like a lamb. Look at that, dude. It's Savage Roar? Oh, I really wanted Savage Roar off the top. That would be <laughs> so good. That was six plus uh, six million. Oh, man. That would have been just so much damage. There it is. Oh, my God. It was one card off. And I think you do it next turn. Depends on even... uh, what the, the, the cards are played on the other end, but like that, your hand is dictating you to be pretty aggressive. Yeah. Well, swipe swipe is is gonna just fit better on this board That's here. 
Yeah. The swipe and, and the 2-3 the Darnassus gives you a clear without losing a single minion, which just gives you a devastating swipe when it actually can matter. Yep, I agree. And uh, now you're stuck with two mana on Trump's side. By the way, these living rooms are just going to pick apart the health totals, just in a very annoying fashion. So, uh, kill off the Darnassus, play the two one-drops. Yeah, this is, uh, back. this is where it can start coming back, but at the same time, the, the Shaman is almost out of cards, and he's done... Ac he, uh, actually, he's done zero damage. <laughs> Nothing. He's not even a dent in the Druid. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll get life tapped though, that'll help get some access to cards, but how much life can you trade off before he's reasonably yeah. just gonna die? Alright, here we go, Savage Roar. 11 damage, not quite enough to really put within threatening range. I think I'd kill the 1-3. Yeah, I don't see why not, you're still pretty far ahead. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's a way to start racking up damage pretty quickly though. Not if it misses the juggle. Oh, that's horrible! If it misses the juggle. Oh wow. man, that's horrible. Yeah, and now that wolf rider dies, basically just being like a three mana rock fighter <laughs> to the face. The rock fighter is better than that, I believe. Oh yeah, you can life tap there. Mm -hmm. Okay, not bad. Let you squeeze it in. Good. And love shock. Oh! That's good. That, that completes the Lava Shock there. Yeah. You have to you do it. You're, you're so low on HP already. And I would like to mention that uh, I believe the Druid will be at 30 HP at the end of this turn. The, the heal and hero power. <laughs> Still zero. Well, you drew Keeper of the Grove, but that doesn't answer the board uh, quite yet. He's just gonna keep her the face. More mana efficient play. I like it. He can also use the Farseer later on, either to heal his Ancient of War or heal his own face. A lot of flexibility there. Mm -hmm. I think the main idea is to make this play in order to not oh, lose what you play Let's next go. turn. The Take four, kill the Keeper. <laughs> Died a Force of Nature the following turn. Oh, no way. Okay. Oh, he's gonna use That's the uh, top of his play. play. Yep. Yeah. Well, he's not if you're on force of nature, but <laughs> got some well, bad he, news. He has enough damage to kill an ancient of war. It's, yeah, it's three you're right. He does three from lightning bolt, and then four from the doom hammer. <laughs> That's uh. Yeah, that is that is playing the entire hand. You get to reload another totem golem. I mean, he's hanging in there. If Drew just yeah, keeps drawing planks, like Innervate, Wild Growth. I mean, those things don't really do much. Just one one tokens for Vile Teacher. I mean, it's it's still possible, Crip. Not likely, but it's possible. No, I'm with you here. Oh, there we go. Uh, the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the Farseer definitely is also really painful because now you have to kill the minion on board. Right, but oh. the, the, the Innervate would have actually been pretty decent, right? Because you could you could hero power and get a 1-1. One, one. You know, I mean, I think he's just I think he's just going to ignore the Violet Teacher, right? And just Lightning Bolt the 3-3, three, three, so then you could just hit face and go for it. Mm-hmm. That puts 7 damage up. That puts his opponent at 17. Oh no, he's killing it. Killing the Vile Teacher. No, just like... Oh, is it? Oh, you're right! Yep. Wow. Doesn't want even the Savage War possibility of dying. Wild Gross does absolutely nothing. The Savage War... Oh. Trub stays alive. I think you'd do it. There's no taunts in the stack. You might as well do it now and then hope to wild growth into like one damage. You can just hero power the face now though, the same thing next turn. Uh can you? Right? You if you hero power now, you still savage or hero power the next turn and put him down on a two turn clock. But now there's this one opportunity. No. Is there Pharaoh Spirits again? 
That's true. I, th I think there is. I think he's only played one Feral Spirits. I think if he taps into Feral Spirits, he he is okay. For now. I mean, there's a wild growth cycle to increase the Druid chances. Life tap of champions! Aww. Not quite. I, I was, like, expecting some pretty... Like ridiculous shenanigans. Where life tap is just nuts. Reddit highlights. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, I was ready, man. I was ready to bust out the hype train, but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's like very unlikely that he comes back. And mm -hmm. honestly, that's if it feels kind of like you just got robbed if you lose from that position. That's nice. All right. Well, uh, Trump. Uh, he has to beat two decks. I think he's slightly unfavored in both matchups, but. Um... Yeah, I, I think all he really Ooh, needs is just a disgusting tunnel trog opener to beat either one of these. Well, that's not the disgusting opener you want. That's uh, three he of the heaviest either. cards in your deck. I think going second um, can be advantageous in some situations with this shaman deck. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If you get tunnel trog into coin feral spirits and priest just passes, that's just probably the best art you can ask for. Uh, yeah. Or even just, like, Trog, Totem Golem, and then, like, Coin, something else, like, Argent Horse, right? Like, that's a lot of pressure on the board. Mm -hmm. Could be Tunnel Trog, Tunnel Trog on one, and then Totem Golem on two. That's always fun. Yep. That's also a possibility. Still looking for an opportunity for... Um, Shaman to get like a guaranteed good turn one play because coin totem golem really forces you to top deck a one drop if you don't have it and your best one drop usually is like like leopard gnome because finley still has uh, application as later it's like it doesn't really have application until you can hero power immediately all right well nefarian is going to be completely useless this game no it's not true hey, come on wormer's agent gets an activator oh yeah okay Sure. If it's a 1-4 with no taunt, that card is just trash. But 2-4 taunt is really good. Yeah. It's going to do one extra damage to the Totem Golem. The Abusive Sergeant, though, is... That, that is brutal. Are you yeah. Me? Oh my god, that is so brutal. Well, the one extra damage might matter because of Holy Nova a little bit later. Get in there, fight. There is the Tunnel Trog, but it's, it's delayed one turn. Um... Looks like Trump will have the option to do Tunnel Trog Lightning Bolt, overload himself for one on turn four for the Feral Spirit. Ooh. Tunnel Trog four attack. It's not looking like one bad turn crib. It's looking like two bad turns. Yeah. Shaman's coming off of overload, so that gives them flexibility to play Argent Horse Rider. Turn four, you have the Tunnel Trog tunnel Feral Trog, Spirit yeah. to play. Ooh, that's also not Finley. Bad Mm -hmm. But I'd like the horse rider now. I think one of the redeeming factors for Priest is Cabal Shadow Priest, so I think Horse Rider is is the only reason it's not always the better charger on three is because of the Cabal issues. Yeah. It's definitely a good point. Okay, so far seer is a pretty big draw, giving him some board presence. Yeah. Something. I don't think you'll get cleared out here. This is one of the more resilient boards that you'll ever get a shaman against Holy Nova. Yeah, but you I think you could have played a bit more defensively against it, but it's still still way good enough here. Like what does Holy Nova do? Holy Nova I wield oh, the power. Okay, yeah. It basically does not good. Yeah, exactly. So that's why playing the Feral Spirits and that was like a really good move because Holy Nova only removed five damage for five mana and um, didn't feel like a high enough impact. Now you can definitely Holy Nova the following turn. Um, if you're the Shaman player, you you know now that you have Finley, I think you can actually play a little bit more board centric and not have to feel like you rush so much because Finley would almost certainly gives you more longevity in your damage. Uh, whether you get Hunter Hero Power or Life Tap or even Druid Hero Power. Um, just, you know, Shaman power, Hero Power is just the worst against Priest. There's so many ways that Priest can manipulate it with AoE, Cabal Shadow mm. Priest, etc. Place Finley now. I like that. And 
if we pick the life tap, uh, I would be pretty good with that. But Hunter is also really good too. Life tap it is. That's so big for Trump. Yeah, but that means the damage is going to keep on coming. It looks like Trump is probably going to be able to seal this game out here. Right, because you don't have access to cards. Uh, Cabal Shadow Priest still has a pretty big impact on this board, though. Because he's going to be trading this in, and then if you take the 2 3 taunt, it's still pretty significant. Um, because then he has to spend his turn life tapping, and he only can play the Argent Horse Rider because he has five mana. No, so like nothing, is it though. Holy Nova with the cleric? Yep, believe so. I mean that that contests the whole board. So anytime you do that, you're pretty happy. I like it. I kind of want to see if uh, he has any more cards to bring him back. Because without Light Bomb, uh, you also miss like a lot of your ability to just clear a big board like that three six eight so about halfway through life tap is very good here wow not a bad card at all totem golem and lightning bolt yeah let's see lightning bolt and keep more of a board yeah with light with life tap you can definitely can just continue to play for some of these board positions here get more mileage out of your two ones and your one ones yeah, the lower cost minions in Hearthstone are just so much more efficient per mana than the higher cost minions. You usually have to combo the higher cost minions or use them in very specific scenarios. Uh, I mean, right now, Trump is just playing a game where he's just out carding big time. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the really funny thing, too, is that just because Priest is never aggressive and nowhere threatening the combo to kill the game, to end the game, he can always just keep lowering his health even to like 10 with life taps. Mm -hmm. Even as the game goes on, Titus has the hero power here. Like that's that's just how bad of a spot he's in. Six, eight, ten, uh, but not Almost. enough mana to use like whatever he life taps into. But he mm, should he life tap? I think so. I think it's a missed card either way. I I'm oh, kind of thinking maybe he should not life tap here. Okay, you want to just get as much board presence as possible early on. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh. Do you want to keep that for Doomhammer? Yeah, you definitely don't rock biter here. But I'm thinking, do you want to clear the Drake? I think you'd probably clear the Drake. That's kind of how Trump has been playing so far. I think both two one minions are going to attack the Drake here. Yeah, I like it. I don't like trading any other higher health minion like the 3-4. So that seems to be a pretty good course of action. The follow-up to this is uh like you're 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 Nope. Oh Smart. Face. Everything face. He's not afraid of Holy Nova number two. And that's that's pretty honestly a pretty good move too. Man, what do you do here if you're Tice? You just have no other options, really. You have to Blackwing no, Corruptor. No and no, then even if, heal. even if he heals in Blackwing Corruptors, he's still dead. Because of the oh, 8 damage, know. exactly. Yep. So I, I mean, he has to draw with as your drain rest something. Agent? I'm... I'm more in the ballpark of Mad Bomber or something. I don't know. <laughs> Mad Bomber! Like, uh, somehow getting Ooh. Unstable Ghoul magically from Nax Ramus, even though it's not legal, right? Yeah. Something uh. like that. Dude, dragons in general have so much potential, but it's just... It just they're just not drawing the early game consistency they need. They're, I mean, it's really clear how much they miss cards like Zombie Chow to have early game presence on turn one. Like, Priest passing that much not having impact onto the board at all. Just a victim of every single expansion when Priest just dies very early to some of these aggro decks. That's gonna do it. So Trump is going to win three to one and advance to the final day as one of our finalists for here at the Curse Trials. Job well done. Being the only guy to bring the Warlock deck. Pretty cool stuff, man. Yep, and 2-0 with the Warlock deck. Doing very well with his uh, little bit of uniqueness, little bit of flavor. And, uh, well, I wish Trump good luck on, uh, on the final day. Uh, Tice, of course, is not out because this was a uh, winner's match. He will be playing 
Uh, I believe it's Kibler who has just now defeated Orange in the non-streamed losers round of the second group. But before we get into that, we will have the second winner's match coming right up for you guys. The second winner's match is going to be Forsen and Strife Crow. They're going to be the same situation, just as Trump is, uh, and, um, and Tice were here, where the winner advances to the final and uh, the loser gets uh, a final game at the end of the day. All right, so we're going to take a break. Uh, shout out to uh, our, our sponsors here. Uh, thank you so much to Geek Fuel as well as the Curse Network putting it on uh, and helping Archon as well as us have a pretty fun tournament. So when we come back, we're going to have more action here at the Curse Trials. It's Forsen versus Strivecrow. Stay tuned. 